with a point about different ways of receiving wahy by the prophets oh, or different <coughs> ways of Allah communicating Bismillah. to the prophets. The key point is that first of all it seems Allah only communicates to human beings although we believe in jinns and they have also freedom they also receive guidance but they follow human prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there has certainly come to you an apostle from among yourselves and we have many places that you know men and in chapter 42 verse 51 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it's not possible for a human being to be spoken by God except in three general ways. Wama kana le basharan. Chapter 42, verse 51. Wama kana le basharan. An yukallimahullah. It's not possible for any human being that God should speak to him illa except wahyan through revelation omen wara'i hijab or from behind a veil aw yursila rasulan fayuhiya bi'idhnihi ma yasha or send a messenger who reveals by his permission whatever he wishes innahu aliyun hakim indeed he is all exalted all wise so based on this our scholars have mentioned different ways of receiving wahy so there are three major ways one is wahyan one is min wara'i hijab one is your seller rasulah and inshallah we discuss them one after the other so the first is wahyan and of course all these three can be called wahy but here wahy means direct and immediate because the second is from behind a well and the third is by sending angel messenger rasul here means angel that brings revelation so sometimes allah communicates directly sometimes allah speaks from behind the well like moses moses uh, moses musa alayhi salam, and sometimes by sending a messenger a rasul we will talk about all of them so let's see first the first one direct and immediate communication so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes chooses a person because of his humbleness because of his piety because of his understanding and intelligence as we said before because of having large capacity he chooses a person then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may project an idea or meaning to the heart or mind or heart and mind of that person so the direct one sometimes is by projecting an idea into the heart and mind or heart or mind of a prophet he would understand the message of God as we said before there would be no ambiguity it would be very clear it's like seeing something and he would understand what to communicate to other people but there is a second type that it's not an idea only it's verbal communication so an idea with some wording is projected so sometimes Allah inspires a prophet by giving him an idea a very beautiful useful idea to be communicated to humanity but sometimes it also involves some verbal aspect so some words actually are communicated the third is or before we go to the next one uh, here uh, I have uh, something that uh, it's maybe interesting to mention to understand the difference that when 
Allah communicates the meaning and not the word. Here in the notes, I have mentioned a story of Prophet Ibrahim, Allah Nabi Nawa Ali Walayhi Salam. According to uh, Quran, Prophet Ibrahim Alayhi Salam had a dream. Of course, maybe this dream repeated that he should slaughter his son and we believe was Ismail of course according to the Bible they say it's Isaac so the Quran says he told his son Ya Bunaya inni ara fil manam anni azbahuk my dear son I have seen in my dream manam means dream I have seen in my dream that I slaughter you it's very interesting that unlike what uh, it's in other traditions in Islamic tradition Ibrahim didn't deceive his son actually mentioned to his son that he had this dream and his son uh, was consulted and he was such an understanding person who said ya abatif alma to umar my father do what you are commanded so he knew that dream of the prophet is hujja ibrahim didn't say i was commanded he said i saw in my dream that i am slaughtering you but he realized that this was a command so without him having any hesitation actually he said to his father he encouraged his father said do what you have been asked he didn't say he said because you can never be sure about yourself never say i will do this certainly tomorrow except you say god willing so you see ibrahim received this idea but it seems that it didn't have any wording it was not verbal communication he had it in dream but sometimes it can be a wording also coming to the prophet so there's a difference between the two then we go to the second of the three types so we said wahyan omen wara hijab Min waray hijab, hijab veil. Hijab in Arabic means a barrier or a partition, something that uh, separates between two things. Means it's called hijab, and we use it uh, for also ritual hijab because the literal meaning can be useful also here. Means that it's separating. Uh, this person who observe hijab from people who are not mahram people who are strangers and the reason is because Quran says to mu'mineen that when you ask the wife of the prophet something hijab, ask them from behind hijab so hijab could be a curtain or can be like a, you know ch chador or can be you know the the literal meaning is something like a barrier a partition so men wara hijab sometimes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks from behind a well like we have about prophet musa alayhi salam and in dua and also this is mentioned you know وَبَعْضٌ كَلَّمْتَهُ مِنْ شَجَرَةٍ تَكْلِيمًا كَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا So, you know that Musa alayhi salam is Kalimullah because Allah spoke to him. And this started 
when in the night he was taking his family and he saw a fire and he went to see this fire and maybe use this fire for their journey and when he went he was surprised because there was a bush and there was fire but the fire was not consuming the bush and then Allah started talking to him Allah. so he was a spoken from that bush from behind the well so that was used as a medium from whom a voice was coming of course Allah does not speak like we speak but he can create the voice you know even today you know there are people who cannot speak they use a machine who creates the voice they can communicate so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a voice that Musa could understand very well but where was this voice coming it has to come from somewhere it came from that bush so Allah is spoken from behind a well it is said in some sources that when the prophet went for mi'raj his ascension to heaven sky there were also uh, some communications that rasulullah heard a voice okay but inshallah as we will see um, it seems the main way of rasulullah receiving why was through jibrail which is taking us to the third one oh your rasulan sometimes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a messenger this rasul is different from the prophet so prophet himself could be rasul or nabi only in our case the prophet muhammad for example prophet musa prophet isa they were also rasul but there is another meaning for rasul for the angel who brings message of god down to the prophet that angel also acts as a messenger so he brings the message to the messenger and then he delivers to the people so he's a messenger from god to the prophet and prophet is a messenger to people okay for example look at this ayah in surah 26 verses 192 to 195 quran is sent down by the lord of alamin the intelligent inhabitants of the world or the worlds how this came down the trusted spirit brought it down nazala bihi arruhul amin ala qalbik so from god jibrail brought it down to the heart of the prophet litakuna min al mundirin so that you would be one of the people who give warning because you know one title for the prophet is nadir so Jibrail brought down this to your heart so that you would warn you would give the message to people in clear Arabic language Inshallah, we will talk about it more in details later. But as you see, the communication to the Prophet involved wording. It was not just idea. Sometimes Allah just sends idea. But the Quranic revelation was idea or meaning plus wording. Even the words are 
revealed by God. It's not that Allah gave the Prophet meanings and he chose how to speak the meaning. You know, sometimes maybe a message is given and the person puts in his own words. But in the case of the Quran, definitely, Quran came with wording in clear Arabic language. This was part of the revelation. So Allah chose Arabic and Allah chose the words. There were some people who were against Islam and against Jibra'il because they thought Jibra'il made a mistake by bringing revelation to the Prophet, which is very a you know, funny idea. So some people developed enmity against Jibra'il. Then Allah says in Surah Baqarah verse 97, قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِجِبْرِيلِ فَإِنَّهُ نَزَّلَهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Tell anyone who is enemy of Jibra'il, Gabriel, that he's brought it down to your heart بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ he, he cannot choose himself that to take it to this man or that man with the permission of God, with the blessing of God, with the leave of God مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَاي وَخُدًا وَبُشْرًا لِلْمُؤْمَنِينَ This message which Jibreel brought from God to your heart confirms what has been revealed before وَخُدًا as a guidance and بُشْرًا good news to the faithful So Jibreel was involved in bringing down the message to the prophet our ulama have gone further and said even this one has some subtypes when an angel is involved sometimes the angel deposits the message in the spirit of the prophet for example, Gabriel, but you must know that it's not always Gabriel who was coming. So sometimes there was no angel involved, and sometimes even if there was angel, it was not Gabriel. But Gabriel was very much involved in communicating the prophet. So it depends on the situation and on the rank of the prophet. So anyway. An angel who could be Gabriel, who could be someone lower than Gabriel, sometimes deposits the message to the spirit or in the spirit of the prophet. But sometimes the angel takes the form of a human being and then speaks. This can be like what happened to Lady Maryam, although she was not receiving prophetic revelation but just as an example how an angel can take form of a human being you have in the quran or when angels went to see ibrahim and his wife and they spoke to both of them wife of ibrahim is not a prophet or prophetess but they saw angels in the form of human beings because angels can take form of human beings or even they can take form of a bird or animal except dog and pig unlike gens that can take the form of even dogs and pigs so sometimes the angel comes in the form of a human being in some historical sources say that jebrail sometimes used to come to the prophet as a human being and he was taking the form of Dihya al-Kalbi, who was foster the brother of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So pe people thought he has come to visit the Prophet because he was fostered. You know, he, he, he was also uh, fostered by Lady Halima, but indeed it was not Dihya Kalbi. He was a nice-looking, nice person, and. Jibrail sometimes was taking his shape and going to visit the Prophet. And sometimes 
It's not depositing the message. It's not by taking the form of a human being. It's like a sound of a bell. A very big sound like a bell, you know, ringing. And it is said that this also was happening sometimes to prophets and it was very difficult to cope with this because you know it's like you being next to a very huge bell and it's you know ring the fourth type is the angel appears to the prophet in its original form Maybe what we have in the story of the first revelation to Prophet was like this. When Rasulullah was in the cave of Hera and for the first time received revelation, in some sources say Rasulullah saw as Jibra'il has been spread all over the horizon and sky. Even this is not uh, uh, except a description because you cannot describe what the prophet had with using physical uh, words okay but it's possible that a prophet in his encounter with the angel would be able to penetrate hijab and see the angel in its real form not angel being in need of taking a form of a human being so that we can see it understand the difference so sometimes the angel comes this part of the whale and in order for us to see or the prophet to see takes the form of a human being or a bird so that we can see sometimes the prophet goes behind the whale and see the angel as they are so there are four types of angels communicating the message of god to the prophet so Illa wahya, which means direct, means no angel is involved, no whale is involved. Allah directly communicates the meaning without wording or with wording. Sometimes men varai hijab. Allah speaks, creates the voice which is understandable by that prophet, but he uses a medium from which the voice is coming, like a bush. And third is to send an angel. Could be Jebrail, could be someone lower than Jebrail. And this angel can deposit the message. This angel can take form of a human being and speak, can be like ringing the bell, or can be appearing in its original form. Why there are different methods? Maybe it depends on the rank of the prophet on the condition of the prophet on the type of the message which is going to be given so there can be different factors inshallah we will talk more about the quranic revelation uh, and the fact that it was involving the wording later so I stop now so that we can have also 10 minutes for question and answer and inshallah we continue next session alhamdulillah rabbil alamin if anyone wants to pose a question just raise your hand assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum um, a few sessions ago, you talked about uh, how the Prophet sometimes would become unconscious when he received revelation. Um, was that specifically to do with direct revelation, or was it when, or was it to do with the heaviness of the word? Which one was it? It seems that uh, it was when the message was coming directly because it's very heavy and also it's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he didn't become unconscious but it was like becoming unconscious, like dying or fainting so Quran says Inna sanulghi alayka qawlan thaqila. it's a heavy word it's difficult even for someone with prophet's capacity to receive it 
But then would it be fair to think that if it came directly from God, it would be much heavier than if it came through an intermediary such sure. as Angel Jibreel? Sure. It's fair to make that assumption. Yes, it seems that if it comes the same thing, because sometimes maybe something simple comes, just inspiration. But if the same thing comes directly, it would be deep more difficult to receive because when the angel brings it, one more level of simplification happens. It's like when you go closer to the waterfall, it, the pressure is more. You know, when you, someone takes water and brings to you, it would be a little bit less demanding. Just to note the questions, the first lesson as well. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam. Uh, Sheikh, uh, you mentioned uh, that when you recite the Quran, uh, God is speaking to you. Um, now, the Quran is mostly in Arabic. It's in Arabic, all of it, in fact. And we don't uh, speak Arabic. Most of us, we don't understand Arabic. So we are left to reading the translation. Now, what are your thoughts? Or what are your, what's, the, what's the consensus um, in terms of translations and how God can communicate with somebody reciting the Quran in, in, a, in a language which isn't Arabic? So. Still, we can benefit from the translation because we can benefit from even looking at the Quran without understanding. But we can benefit more if we understand. So still, we can benefit from the translation. But translation is never uh, perfect, never doing justice. Because the translator somehow limits the meaning yeah because he understand only that much that he has background he has knowledge he has information and then he limits for you you cannot go beyond his understanding for the most part therefore those who cannot understand arabic it's good to find a reliable translation but if anyone can try to understand arabic learn Arabic, even if it is to some extent, at least to understand the famous words, common structures, it would help a lot. Even, you know, nowadays you see people who are doing um, research, they go and learn other languages, even sometimes two, three languages, just to do their PhD, you know, they learn languages. Uh, so for us, it shouldn't look something, you know, not possible to learn another language when our faith and relation with Allah needs. There is a hadith which says, تَعَلَّمُ الْعَرَبِيَّةِ فَإِنَّهَا كَلَامُ اللَّهِ الَّذِي تَكَلَّمَ بِهِ خَلْقَهِ This is the language that Allah has spoken to you. So we don't want to say people who don't understand Arabic cannot be mu'min, cannot be, you know, very close to Allah. No, they can be. But the same people, if they know Arabic, they can do better. Yes. Can I just plug the fact that there is a Arabic vocab and grammar course during Maha Ramadan, so please do sign up. Yes. You had a question? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum uh, My question is about the the revelation and that the Holy Prophet was considered Khatim al Nabiin. But so leading up to that point, the revelation and the message was perfect. And beyond that point, we needed and we were given perfect teachers. But throughout their the lives, their lives, they were oppressed. And throughout the the then the corresponding hadith, which were then given. We were then separated from the hadith at that time. The books were compiled later on. And then following that, now we're at an age where we would be now 1400 years separated from when the Prophet first came. So all these temporal relations and all the 
the then following imperfections afterwards, which weren't due down to the personalities, but due to the scenarios and the situations which were in place, sounds like it could create a lot of variation in opinion from people who then would be considered scholars who then interpret. So following on from that, if you have variations of opinion, it makes it very difficult sometimes to try and figure out what is to you what would be the right message following on from what would have been the perfect revelation. And so to me, if I, find it very, I find it difficult at times to put those two concepts together that the perfect revelation was given, yet now we have so much variety of opinion how like how how can that equate um and how does that equate yes okay so what's important is that first of all we have the revelation exactly as it was revealed this is actually our next point that the revelation is available to us without any addition or loss so this is very good so we have the capital Secondly, we have a method for understanding the revelation. It's a scientific discussion. There can be many opinions, no problem, but it's not that they are all valid. So you have to find a method which is the most reliable method. Something that you can say on the day of judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I follow this method and this is why I have believed in this way or acted that way. So our method is a method which has been developed over 14 centuries of a scholarship. How to deal, to deal with a text. Even we don't have only one science we have science of usul we have science of fiqh we have you know rajal deraya everything so that we know how to deal with the text whether it be quran as the first or hadith so alhamdulillah we have proper method which can always be developed but you follow the best available scholarship and as you see alhamdulillah over 14 centuries, we have always come forward. We have always refined and improved our understanding, maintaining the principles. So, the Quran is saved, Hadith are saved for evaluation and analysis, and we have a methodology that we follow. So we are not 100% sure that what we understand is correct, but we are 100% sure that we have a methodology which is the best available methodology. And Allah doesn't ask you for more than that. You should do what is the best possible thing. Any questions from sisters, please? If not, I think we have time for just one more. Was there any from gents? Or can we finish there? Okay. Students, just to note, we have another lesson tomorrow, same time, 8 p.m., and then final 10th lesson next week, but that's back again on Tuesday. Okay. Sheikhna, Jazakallah. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ahsan. And the thing now they recently I think they found out that apparently the, 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 the bones or the material with the ants are made is of glass. You know how scientific is this? That God could have you'll crush us, for example. But that specific word which is used for a glass, the ant is saying to Surah. You know, so there has to be something. One is baffled. You know, that what is it? Know, how specific, how precise, even in that scientific sort of explanation. You know, and, and you know, many people have may have tried to look at errors the same way as those who love the Quran, trying to interpret. You think they are not those who are the evil, those who hate the Quran, trying to look at the faults. You know, somebody brings a theory, another scientist tries to look for something so that he could become 
more powerful, he could become more, you know, he challenges that theory and he presents something new. So it is not possible that there are not scholars, philosophers, scientists who continuously try to do something that they can go against the Quran. You know. But still we don't find that anybody, you know, have even, you know, presented something that could be an eye-catching, you know, that could be really discussed as such. Inshallah, I think we'll stop here. We'll continue tomorrow as well, inshallah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. It's like so, you know, in the Tariq, you know. So if you want to talk about the fazail of Quran, we can just talk, just like the Ahl Bayt. You know, it's really amazing, you know. Different aspects, different meanings, history, you know, how God has talked about the stories of the prophets. Could have been. Uh, there's no specific indication, but as we say that there were 124,000 prophets, so he could have been a prophet. But definitely he's been mentioned by Imam Sadiq. As, as a, as they were men of God. And they invited people by Burhan towards Tawheed. Yeah, if you look at their contribution, it's, it's quite to, you know, have uh, a general understanding of these philosophers and their contributions, uh, even on the surface level it's okay to really see that how, you know, uh, the Islamic philosophy stands out, or some of those errors that the philosophers have made, Descartes for example, he was a great Christian philosopher, but unfortunately he had some you know, limitations and the downfall of Christianity really started from there. Aquinas, St. Thomas Aquinas, he really studied Aristotle and he revived Christianity, for example. Uh, Kant was a uh, fascinating philosopher as well, amazing. You know, arguments of you know, you know, ontology, you know, existence of God, you know, you could really see these things when they have used. Um, uh, a, a good book to really go through on a very brief scale is the A-level textbook for philosophers. You know, I was just going through with my daughter and all of these philosophers and their arguments and, and, and they try to really refute them you know, from a very materialistic point of view which because uh, now their arguments are refuted but you have the Islamic philosophers who tend to go into more detail than these people have you know, and they come up with sort of, sort of uh, of these material sort of arguments. 